Today we're going to demonstrate the many benefits of natural light and how to get that perfect broody lighting. Good day everyone, we are joined today by Randy who will be our lovely model today and she's going to help us go through the many benefits of indoor natural lighting, aka window light. Over here, Jesse will also be helping us. Natural lighting is the simplest lighting and you could achieve that right now. Unless it's dark. There are two main factors to consider, brightness or darkness and then the angle of the camera in relation to the natural light. So let's start with the most obvious, front lighting. The sun is a light source and therefore it should face the model. That's the first thing people think of and that's totally fine. It's the safest and most predictable of the lighting angles. Virtually no shadows and everything is well lit, but less dramatic and less creative. It's the natural equivalent to having flash on the top of the camera. So what you wanna do is have the window behind you and the model is facing the window and you in between them. The closer she is to the window, the stronger the light will be, obviously. The bigger the room, the darker we can make the background. Although this is my least favorite method, it does have a big plus that the others don't. Catch light. You see the reflections in her eyes will be the biggest because the window is close and big. So this is really good for shots where the eyes are the focus of the picture. Everything we shoot is as we see it, so it's pretty easy to work with. But the problem is it's flat. Since there are no shadows, there is no sense of depth. Shadows add shape and drama to a photo, and without it, it can be dull. Backlighting. This is the opposite of front lighting, where the sun is facing you with the model in between. Everything is not as we see, and that's due to dynamic range. When we look at the scene with our eyes, we can see the model clearly, and we can see what's outside at the same time perfectly fine. Unfortunately, our cameras can see about a third of what we see, from the darkest dark to the brightest bright. If we wanna see what lies in the shadows and we expose for them, the background becomes too bright and we can't see outside the window. If we wanna see what's outside the window, we can't see the model. The model becomes a silhouette. One of the ways we can fake it to look like what we actually see with our eyes is through HDR. You might've heard that term before. Maybe your camera phone even has it. It stands for high dynamic range. What it does is it takes several photos, dark ones and bright ones, and it combines them into one image. We can either expose for the subject and blow out the window, or expose for what's outside and our model becomes a silhouette. Another key feature of backlighting is what's known as rim light. This will typically be on the model's head and shoulders and will help separate her from the background. We can use rim lighting to outline the body and enunciate the curves. More on this later. Side lighting. Side lighting is exactly as it sounds. It's lighting from the side, shot perpendicularly from a 90 degree angle. Side lighting is a lot more dramatic than front lighting because it creates deep shadows. Textures and emotions will pop out a lot more and photos will already seem way more artsy, almost classical. And there's a reason for that. A lot of classical painters use just one light to the side of the model's face, the most famous being Rembrandt, who had a specific lighting named after him. Rembrandt lighting is essentially side lighting with one main feature, the triangle. The perfect triangle should be no wider than the eye and no longer than the nose. This is more easily achieved with artificial lighting, but we'll take what we can here with window lighting. The main benefit of side lighting is it gives us depth. It makes the photo more 3D and it just pops out a lot more than front lighting. Dramatic. Also, we don't have to worry about dynamic range limitations as much because there isn't as much contrast between the shadows and the highlights. Well, at least not to the point where HDR would be needed. But the drawback obviously is the subject won't be evenly lit from left to right. The side closer to the window will always be brighter than the side away from the window, which will get lost in the shadows. We can try brightening up the shadows using a reflector, but we'll get to that in a later episode. I wanted this to be just you, a camera, window light, and a butt. No extra accessories allowed quite yet. We can further break down side lighting into short and broad lighting. Broad lighting versus short lighting. An easy way to think about it is if perfect side lighting was at 90 degrees, these would be 45 and 135. Now this is where the magic happens. The 45 angle will combine front lighting with side lighting. It's right in the middle, creating a bit of drama, but lighting up the subject a lot more evenly than just side lighting. The 135 angle, or as I call it, ab lighting, the holy grail of booty lighting, technically short side lighting. This will be mixing that steamy silhouette with rim lighting, but it will bend the rim light in a way to hit parts of the body. This is magic because any body part it hits 
it will define it. So even if you have hints of abs, this will make them pop out. Let's shoot more here so you can really appreciate it. Side lighting, 45. Side lighting, 135. Now keep in mind that the more depth and contrast we add, the more textures show up. So what that means is any skin irregularities will pop out with the more dramatic setups. Any bumps, acne, wrinkles will be more prevalent in the side lighting categories. The flat nature of front lighting is really good for evening those out. A bit more boring, but a safer bet, especially for dramatic wrinkles or acne. It's a win-lose with every angle and you gotta pick your battles. Try to figure out what mood you're going for before positioning your model. If you just got a camera for Christmas or are just in a creative rut, try to get a shot from each one of these angles. Front lighting, back lighting, direct side lighting, 45, 135. I personally shoot in a darker style, but you don't have to. This is a great exercise to understand light, and winter light is the most diffused and flattering. So get practicing, and if you want to show off what you have learned, tag Mystery Bum Lighting for your chance to be featured in a future episode. Anywho, if you enjoyed this comprehensive yet basic tutorial, slap that like button. If you want to see more, subscribe and comment any questions you might have about this episode or what you want to see me tackle next. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. I know.